Today, we're going, we're going to, duplicate to duplicate ourselves. ourselves. Hey everybody, welcome down to the shop. Buddy Cosplay here. Today we're going to make a professional positive of our face. We're going to do this by making a mold out of alginate and then pouring plaster into it. This is the final result. As you can see, there's a lot of detail. It's got my eyes, even my old wrinkles here. It's got a lot of details that you can't get from just making a plaster bandage face mask. I keep saying face mask. It is a <laughs> plaster positive, not a face mask. If you were to make one of the plaster bandages, you'd get something that has all the correct sizes and dimensions of your face, such as this, but it really lacks in the detail department in comparison to the ones we're going to make today. So what we're going to make it out of is alginate. Alginate comes in a powdery form. It's lightweight. It's kind of like flour. And you add water to this. This particular brand, which is Algisafe from Smooth On. If I can get it in camera there. This is mixed one-to-one -one by volume. And it's pretty easy to work with, uh, but there's a little bit of a learning curve to it, as you'll see in the video. We messed up the first time. And it wasn't because of the material, it was because of a safety issue. And you will see that as we go. But other than the alginate, you'll need some plaster bandages and some other small materials that we're going to talk about in the introduction. So let's just go ahead and get started and we'll show you how to make another one of your lovely faces. We're going to begin by making the alginate negative. You're going to need some water, some plaster to make your positive from. You're going to need some plaster bandages to make a support shell, some Vaseline for your eyebrows and eyelashes, something to clean your face or you can just use your sink, baby lotion, some plastic if you have to cover your hair, and then of course you'll want a hair dryer to help speed up the drying process as well as some alginate. It's also good to have some disembodied hands or better yet some hands that are attached to somebody else. Start out by cleaning your face. You could do it at a sink, but I just have these baby wipes that I'm going to use here. Not sure what that was about, but uh, oh well, let's move on. Clean your face really well. I like to apply some moisturizer to my face just because this stuff can sometimes pull out the moisture in your skin. This of course is an optional step but do it if you wish. If you have hair to cover use a plastic wrap, a swimmer's cap or a latex bald cap to cover your hair because this alginate will stick to your hair. We're going to begin the process by putting on some Vaseline onto our eyebrows and even our eyelashes. Have your kid make funny faces, give you bunny ears, and owe you five punches for doing that. Because we're from the 80s. Cover your clothing with something. I just cut a hole in a plastic garbage bag and put it over myself, which was not adequate. I ended up ruining my shirt. So I also recommend wearing a shirt that you are not afraid to lose. Begin by focusing on the nose because that is going to be the most precarious place to do it. If you clog up somebody's nostrils, then you are going to pretty much ruin the whole process. As you'll see, I'm trying to flick out pieces of alginate that's going into my nose. And we actually ruined this first attempt because I can't breathe. I keep trying to push at it, I wind up opening my mouth. So it's very important to make sure that the nostrils are clear at all times. And right here she put a big glop over my face which pretty much suffocated me. I had to open my mouth a couple times and you know it just it pretty much ruined it. So there is a small learning curve here. Uh, take your time around the nose, make sure you're doing it right and have a safe word or some hand signals if you have to rip it off. It comes off pretty simple as you can see. And don't be afraid to 
to uh, start over instead of foregoing safety. We are reapplying the Vaseline to the eyebrows and the eyelashes. And we're being a little safer around the nose this time. We're going to take our time and we're going to be sure we don't clog my nostrils and waste another batch. going to continue to add this on. You have about five minutes of working time. It says five to seven, but it really felt like it was more about four. So make sure you do it in a quick way, but do it in a safe way as well, because this stuff will set up pretty quick. It'll actually start getting grabby at some point. It'll start sticking to your hands and it'll start pulling it off. You also want to make sure you're pushing the alginate into the eyes to get out any air bubbles. You want to make sure you release those by adding pressure around the eyes, the nose, the lips, things like that. Anywhere that air pockets could form. Once that's done and it is cured, which is the five to seven minute mark, you can start applying plaster bandages. The whole time I've got a hair dryer blowing in my face. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I had no problem doing it, so it kind of sped up the process. So if you feel like that's something you can do, or you want to do, feel free to do so. It did not affect anything going forward. We're going to continue to overlap these strips of plaster, and we're going to add some extra support around the nose. This plaster shell is basically only going to be there to hold the alginate in a good solid uh, form. You don't want it to warp or anything like that as you're putting the plaster in later. And of course, we're being careful around the nose not to plug up my nostrils. So, you know, I don't want to die. So let's not do that. I sped dry my plaster shell with a hair dryer. It's good to have one handy. It dries in about five minutes with a hair dryer. And once that plaster bandage case is dry, everything should be good. And you just lean your head forward and you wiggle your face, making small micro expressions until everything starts to break loose. Once you are free of that, you have about an hour that you can really uh, use this alginate before it starts to break down and as you can see I've ruined my shirt so without wasting any time since we're on a time frame here I mixed up a little more alginate and I'm putting it into the nostril holes that were open to kind of clog it up you can also use some clay or something like that once you're done with that flip it over and use some plaster bandages to cover the nostrils on the outside so nothing leaks out and then I'm going to speed dry that with a hair dryer as well. Now we're moving on to making the plaster positive. You want to take a container of some sort that you can put your mask in. You can use a bucket or you can just cut something out like this. Put your face mask in there. It's going to have to sit for several hours so make sure it won't fall over. And begin mixing up your plaster. I picked this plaster up at Hobby Lobby using a 40% off coupon, paid about four bucks. I did this in two layers so I didn't waste too much plaster. The first layer I put in, as you can see, it's a consistency of like a creamy soup. I poured it in and I used my fingers to move around all the plaster to make sure there's any air bubbles or air pockets that they would be released and come to the surface. I also jiggled it around and shook it to try to also help release any air bubbles so they will not be in my finished piece. I mixed up a second batch. As you can see, I'm pouring it close. If you pour it from too far of a distance, it will probably put air bubbles back into it. So you want to just do it close when you're pouring that in. Set it to the side to dry, and when it's dry, you'll have this. Now you would think it'd just pop out, but it won't. So you'll probably have to cut the shell off. And again, this alginate is only a one-time use type of material, so you're only going to get one casting. So it doesn't matter if you destroy it. 
Remove all the plaster bandages and then the alginate should just come off real nice and easy. It doesn't matter if it rips because like I said, you really won't get more than one cast out of alginate anyway. If you're looking to make multiple casts, you can look into some different types of silicone that will hold up over time and allow you to do multiple casts. And this is what you end up with. As you can see, there were some air bubbles around the inside of my eyes and the corners of my mouth. We didn't push it out well. And that's what will happen if you're not extra careful with uh, applying the alginate. And now I've just got a small screwdriver and some sandpaper and I'm going to basically carve out the air bubbles that were in there to make it a little more smoother so my finished piece will look a little more professional. Around the nose is always going to be an issue because you leave those air holes open and then you plug it up so it's never going to be 100% accurate. And I will tell you do not ever, 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 ever put straws in your nose to keep your nostrils open you risk bumping into those straws and poking yourself in the nose and hurting yourself so don't do that while cleaning things up don't use too much sandpaper on the actual face part because you don't want to sand away all the detail only use it where you have to but you can be liberal with the sandpaper and such on the back side to make it sit flatter and here is our finished piece we're just going to take some Mod Podge now and we're going to put three to five layers on it allowing each layer to dry. Of course I will recommend that you allow this to sit out as per the directions of your plaster for maybe 24 hours to fully dry before you start applying the Mod Podge. And here you can see a comparison between the two. The one on the left is alginate, the one on the right was made with just plaster bandages and you can see the difference in the level of detail. The alginate one obviously produced a whole lot better of a finished product and if you're looking for accuracy this is what you want to use compared to the one that just has the plaster bandages. Of course the plaster bandages is much cheaper so use whatever is best for you. So there you go. Our alginate is uh, pretty much useless at this point. These things really only are good for about an hour. You really have to make your cast pretty quick in case I didn't specify that enough in the video. But it's really neat if you look at these, you can really see the amount of detail that is captured. All these little wrinkles and skin texture that really pays off if you're trying to make something with a lot of detail. Look at all those pores. Gross. So that's it. That's how you make your alginate face cast. Now again, these are the high quality versions uh, with the detail at least um, and you can use all kinds of different plasters uh, there's really hard ones um, they range in price I've made them with plaster of Paris and some other kinds of quick set plasters that you can pick up at your local craft stores and if you're looking to make some high detail prosthetics or something like that this is the perfect way to go so that's it for today hope you uh, enjoy the video and click that subscribe button See you guys next time.